Well, y'all always been saying I needed a bigger trap. Is that big enough? Come on. <laughs> All right, look, I've made it down to Florida. Y'all seen when my boys played baseball, had a good game, threw a complete game shutout. I dropped him off about 10, 30, 11 o'clock last night down at the beach. Then I rolled on a few more hours, and I've got up with my man Ryan Boyd with Quick Catch and It's the Wild Life. What's going on? Good to see y'all. Yeah. Good to be out here with old Yacht Yacht. Yeah, yeah, it's hot. He said, he it's said, hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> he asked me, he said, you want to hunt? And I said, in this heat? So anyway, what we're doing, I've come down here. I've got a hog guy, uh, the hog guy trap camera system. We're going to try to maybe put that together in the morning, show him how we can take that camera system and move it over to different traps and whatnot to hopefully make it a little bit better for you. And uh, I mean, I've caught one or two pigs in my life. Have you? Yeah. So hopefully he can catch one or two more and he is. You got to check him out. It's a wild life. I'm telling you, what I do does not compare to what he does. He, he does like some real stuff. I just be faking until I make it kind of stuff. But anyway, we're on his place. They said they're going to feed some stingray. We're going to, I said, hey, you want smoked chicken or you want stingray? And I'm thinking he's going to say, smoked chicken? What are you crazy? <laughs> he said, cook up the stingray. It's, we're we're going to try, good, man. we're going to try something new. And, uh, and, and if not, then he had plenty of deer feed, uh, in the shed over you're there. You're gonna get fed either way. <laughs> either way. <laughs> but anyway, we're just cruising the place out, checking things out. So y'all enjoy, and uh, we'll just give you a glimpse of what we got going on. And we might shoot something, you never know. Oh, uh, but like I said, it's hot. It's miserable for me. Anyway, you know me, I'm lazy. He actually showed up, and I was on the couch late up. So, anyways, I said, let's get to work, man. This is, <laughs> this is our big deer trap. So yeah, yeah. Doing, tell them what we got going. What we're with. doing is we've got a big giant deer trap, and. Our property here, we've got too many deer on it, which is a good problem to have, but we've got other properties that are friends of mine's in Florida that don't have as many deer or they don't have the genetics that they want. So we actually have the permitting to be able to trap some of these deer, move them to some of these other properties to get those better genetics in Florida. I mean, people see our deer, they look like a, a dog or a greyhound. Yeah, they're so not... they want those better genetics. So that's, that's what right. we're doing here. We've got this giant trap and right now I'm just conditioning them to use it. We're gonna drop the gates on them and move them to another spot. Yeah, because what they do is they come in here and see with the, with the black uh, visqueen, whatever, I don't know what you call it, the black walls, they don't run into it or nothing like that. Right. You've seen they don't them. try to run through what they can't see through. It's That's almost right. like a big black thick plastic all right. the way around it. Yeah. So it's really not heavy. It looks big and heavy, but it's, it's just more so cumbersome. Right, so those trap cameras that we use can also use stuff like this as well. But like I said, you've seen how those hogs just smash everything that, you know, when I catch and all that. Uh, and they don't do it as much as night because they can't see as well to get through. But that's the same way you catch a bunch of deer or buffalo or whatever you catch. They're not, when they drop that canvas, they don't just run into that stuff. They'll just run circles. Just run circles. And uh, so anyway, like a little old uh, personal rodeo for yourself. But anyway, let's, uh, let's go ride around, get an air breeze going. Let's do it. Turn on that AC. Pretty right there. Well, you can marry people right here. They love it. It's like a filet mignon. And what he said was, we getting some mushrooms. He asked me, did I like them? This ain't the kind with the cow patty. <laughs> no. <laughs> These are chanterelle mushrooms, and you might not think it to look at it, but that tastes like a filet mignon. Hmm. I told my brother about these. He's like, I don't know. And he tried one, and he left the steak on the plate and ate these. Yeah. They are well. so good. They go perfect with stingray. Yeah. I'm gonna go good with that stingray, he said. I don't know, we kinda we get frowned upon in Mississippi if we go to pull the mushrooms out of the field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got sweet tea? No, but I got this can. <laughs> I'll just have a little taste of them anyway. Yeah. Out there, big and tall. Oh, man, which one is that? Is that a regular deer or like one of those phallic ones? Like Pretty.
Violet. This is one of our breeder deer. And she's our pet. Some people raise dogs and cats. I've been, that's kind of boring. <laughs> uh, we all like deer. Everybody don't like cats. All of our little fawns, that eight, eight fawns in this particular pen. And they wondered, who is that? Yeah. He talked funny. Yeah, do, yeah. He don't sound like he from around here. Yeah. <laughs> Can she let me feed her? Probably him. No. Probably not hungry. Oh boy, it was hot. Yeah. And it's crazy. Hope y'all can hear me. I'm talking a little soft because I don't. But it's crazy. Like, just we have deer in Mississippi and we and we hunt deer and we do this, but it's a little bit different. Like, she's coming up petting the deer, like yeah. for us, because we don't get to do that unless right. it's on the ground, you know. Yeah. But look at Very that. <laughs> you see what she did? Yeah. <laughs> she rolled that neck like my wife rolls her eyes when I'm talking to her. <laughs> my wife does the same thing. <laughs> So, it's really neat. We want to come down here and look at the other pen, other breeder buck, stretching it out there. buddy what you doing so these are all yearlings here that's their first rack one-year-old rack he's a three-year-old and he him on the left we had to cut him we had to amputate his antler because he hit it he bumped it and broke that whole entire side it was just hanging by the skin mm. we actually had to amputate it and uh give him some antibiotics get him it would have, it would have probably killed him. They get antler infection, it goes straight right. to their brain, and within just a matter of days, they're done. Hmm. That's so. That's one year old Rex. One year old Rex. That's their first the, set. Dude, we're putting those on the wall in Mississippi. Yeah, you hear right. me? <laughs> they were born this time last year. This time, golly. That's all right. Old dude running right here. He's checking things out. That heel shot right there. Wish he'd look at me. Oh yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's a perfect shot, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a perfect shot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, he'll die of old age. Yeah. Hey, so these are like your breeders? These yeah. are our breeders, yeah. So what we do is we will breed the really good quality does with the really good quality bucks. We put those on our property and other properties, and it enhances the genetics, and those deer will die of old age. We want them to breed. We don't want to kill them. Because in the wild, what happens? is the better genetic deer get shot out. Everybody wants to shoot the eight points and the 10 points. They don't want to leave them to breed. Right. They leave the four points and the six points to breed. So all the great big genetics get shot out really quickly. And so this is a, the best way to get the best genetics possible onto your property. Okay. That's why, that's why I was left in civilization. So I was the best breeder. <laughs> <laughs> that what it is <laughs> man that stuff's getting deep <laughs> so like another reason why we spend so much time in here is because once i get to know these individual deer i can tell if one of them's not acting right you know if he's off by himself or his ears are back or his ears are a little droopy or his eyes aren't big and bright i can tell hey that something's off for that deer he's not feeling good right and so i can get on him and get the, the medication or the medical attention that he needs right about like knowing your kids. Yep. Yeah, these are my kids. All right. So the way you can tell these mushrooms is they're, it's kind of like veins underneath. They're not pores or gills. And then in other ways, when you peel them apart, it's like string cheese. Okay. And that's the, that's the way you tell. You don't want to eat the jack-o'-lanterns. That's the toxic look-alike. <laughs> that make you see weird stuff. Yeah. I told myself I like the mushrooms, but one, It'll make you see triplets around here. Oh my 
Yeah. Make sure you get the right one. It'll make you fertile now. <laughs> It'll make you fertile. <laughs> oh. Okay. Doesn't get any pressure than that. Yeah. All right, so we got these cooked up, or he got them cooked up. No, what's on them? Or is it nothing on Salt and on? pepper. Salt and pepper. And they melted. Okay, I thought it was like a butter like and salt and pepper. Butter and salt and pepper. All right, we're going. We're going big bite. It's very edible. I mean, I like mushrooms. I'm a mushroom stuffed mushroom kind of guy, but to be picked right off the deer patties out there. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Just a little butter and, and a skillet. Yeah, you cook that with a steak. Mm. They're succulent. I mean, they're like they're kind of meaty, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Good stuff. There you go, folks. Chanterelles. Chanterelles, the legal mushroom. Oh man, good morning. I'm in here this morning. Oh, I hadn't heard from him yet, but. I'm just kind of going on and getting his camera stuff put together and uh, whatnot. Just have it kind of ready. When I leave here, I'm headed to back to Pensacola, which is about four hours from here. We're going to try to do a little fishing. So maybe I won't get sick this time. <laughs> We're going to see anyway. But I'm just up trying to get the camera together and uh, whatnot. And so when he's ready, when Ryan's ready to roll, I'm ready to roll. Oh, good morning to y'all. All right, guys, we are uh, down here in Florida helping Ryan Boyd out, switching over to, to the Hall Guy camera system. And we're just changing out the lashes right now, showing how easy it is to take from uh, one system to the next uh, and showing how simple it is. Basically, you just drill two holes. Need a longer, need a longer one, longer bolt. Right. So, like I said, we we're swapping over some tricker mechanisms on this and, and showing all that and how to do it. Y'all seen how my trap works, and it works the same way here. Uh, and we're just waiting on uh, the whole guy camera system to let us know it's alive and whatnot. But we're gonna give it a quick test. He's just gonna test it with his with his finger real quick to see, make sure it works right. Three, two, one. See, caught on. Oh, ho, they should be caught. So when the camera wakes up, we'll be ready. All right. Well, guys, like I told you, you know, it's hot down in Florida. Anyway, we got the trap kind of, kind of somewhat figured out, you know, and for the best of my abilities anyway. And my best abilities is, is tearing up something. So I already tore up something and just gave it right back to him and told him he figured it out. But anywho. I hope y'all listen. get ready to listen to the podcast I did with him last night. Uh, we're coming up in August and whatnot. And uh, like I said, just trapping. So I wanted to give you something. I asked him the other night how he drug his hogs up. And he just said he, he just gripped them and, and just did it. And if you'll end up listening to the, the, hog, uh, the podcast where we talked about you getting bit by a hog. And he had some uh, physical conditions to do with that. So I told him I didn't have a brand new one, but I was going to give him one of these pocket drags. Yeah, that'll work. And uh, I've seen you using them. That's a game changer. That is a game changer. And, and you just, you can hook them on the wherever. So it don't matter. Two at a time? If you're man enough. <laughs> a lot of times I just take uh, it. It depends on the size of the pig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can do two at a time with about uh, about 20 pounders. You just throw your hand in there. That's it. That's it. Just roll with it. You ain't even got to go that far. You just grab it on the end or, or whatever right there and uh, drag it. But I remember, I was telling him I remembered the days that. I used to just grab them. And, and a lot of people don't understand, they're not like dragging deer. They, th these hogs got them cankles. And, you know, they, they knees and all that just come right down to the ankles, you know. And they just, it's hard to grip and stay a grip. grab onto. Yeah. So, and they're, when they're muddy, you can forget it. It's like oh, an oiled noodle. It's, it's over with. You can't even hardly drag. You can't drag them. And I don't know how I did it. I told him I used to use rebar. Uh, stick it through the hock and drag them. So that's been a game changer in my life. So I hope you... Hope it yeah, works for you. I'm hoping to use it tonight on this. Yeah, that's session. right. Put We're it. hoping that he's going to drop uh, uh, tonight, or, or hopefully he's had pigs in it. And he asked me, he's like, what you think? I was like, man, I know pig trapping. 
Don't worry about me for no pigs. Just catch when you're supposed to catch. Don't be worried about me. We, so. we were sitting there doing the podcast. We could have trapped five last night, but that's not the whole group. There's about 15 in this group. That's right. And, and like I said, he does it for a living. I do it for a living, so you're serious about it. So, yeah, we could have had y'all a little footage this morning, but as far as for the landowner, you know, the man that pays the bills, <laughs> you, you got to do right. So, anyway. I appreciate y'all tuning in, kind of seeing what he has going on in his life. Y'all check him out on his YouTube. It's a wild life. And uh, I'm headed to Pensacola. Going to do a little bait fishing and uh, eat a little seafood. Y'all know how it goes. Y'all have a good one. God bless. And this is always Jesus loves you. Arr!